Hello and welcome to another tutorial on API testing with Python series. Now, um, once you have figured out how your API works and what are the test cases to automate, the next step is to write um, your test cases and test suits, then move on to create a full uh, automation framework. So, now uh, to write test cases and test suits, um, we'll have to make use of a test uh, module or li library. Uh, in Python by default you have uh, uh, something called the unit test module that basically helps you to write uh, uh, test shoots and test cases uh, but uh, there are also other modules that you can install like pytest and nose test um, uh, among those pytest is the uh, one of the best I think uh, I, because it uh, provides uh, all the all, all different options like prioritizing parameterization, report generation, uh, generation etc. So, uh, most people uh, prefer uh, PyTest. Uh, so, let's, uh, this tutorial is about the basics of uh, PyTest and how to use it. Okay, let's, uh, let's just start with that. Uh, first step is to install the library. Uh, that is just as uh, same as you would install any Python library. Pip install PyTest and hit enter this will install the module then you can make use of that uh, for now I'm going to create one file here I'm just going to name it as sample the uh, sample that's all sample.py now okay this one will work if you do pip install by test okay I have already installed it so okay once that is done okay now I have a file here. I'm just going to create a method here. So I'm going to say method. I'm going to name it as method one and just say pass here. Okay. Let me just run pytest command here. If this command pytest just pytest does not work, you may have to do python space minus m then pytest. Uh, so pytest should work most of the time okay if you do that basically py, what pytest does it, it tries to collect all the tests that is available in the current directory in this case it says uh, collected zero items that is because one your file name does not have uh, test the word test in it so in, in, if you, in case if your file name don't have the word test then you may have to explicitly mention the file name like this sample Mm. Okay, I'm in a different directory. Let me just uh, go to the directory first. Test. Okay. So now let me just run uh, pytest. Uh, it says the character zero items. Now, if I change the name of this, let me just refactor and add the word test in it. And so, then if I do this. It will recognize that file as a test file. Then uh, this will uh, this will be useful when you have a lot of test file in a directory, and uh, you, of course you cannot ex explicitly mention all the names of the all the all the files. So in that case, when you do just pytest, you don't have to explicitly mention like sample dot py. Uh, if you just do pytest, it should detect the file. But in this case, it still says zero. That is because your, even your test method needs to have the word test. These are the basic two rules or constraints you can say that you need to do while running tests. Just to recognize them as the test cases, you need to have the uh, the methods need to have the word test in them. So now that I have given the word test as a part of the method name. Uh, if I do pytest, it should detect the test. As, as you can see, it says collected one item and uh, test has been passed. So, this is the first thing. Now, what you can do? Okay, now let's see uh, I, um, what are the command line arguments that you can use. So, basically, um, okay. Uh, the, uh, there are many command line arguments. The Mostly the ones that I use. Uh, uh, one for verbosity. Okay, now if I say pytest minus v, then give the file name and hit enter. 
as you can see it actually gives me the gives me the uh, file name if I have a class here it will also give me the class name uh, 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 here the it mentions gives the prints out the name that uh, the method test method name and um, uh, you can expect you can easily see that uh, which uh, test case has passed on the console that's why you can, that's where you can make use of uh, the verbos verbosity uh, command line argument another one is that suppose if you have a print statement and it says, it says that this is a method one right say this is test one so if i do the same here it's, it does not uh, do the printing on the console you cannot see the print statements here so to make that visible on the console what you have to do is what you can do is capture is your hyphen hyphen capture is a no as uh, okay now you can see the print statement here this is a uh, test one so uh, these are the mainly two command line arguments that I use there are many other uh, command lines available but uh, these are the two most important ones at least for the sake of repeat this thing um, now okay now that we have done with that now let's see how we can write a test suit so first thing is you need to import unit test then you have to create a class and say test one and this class should inherit from test case unit test dot test case class now uh, as you know you already that when you are running uh, writing a test case you have some kind of, some kind of setup and some kind of teardown uh, for the cleanup purpose also when you are writing uh, at a suit level you have um, a setup and teardowns at suit levels too so to handle that uh, we can uh, make use okay well, let's say let me just write one sample test case here say I have test one basically it prints uh, this uh, is test one now let me just add one more test um, method test case here okay this is test 2 and it prints out this is test 2 so uh, these are the two test cases now we will have uh, setup and teardowns at case level and we will have setup and teardowns at uh, suit level now the case level what we can do is can say diff setup you can say setup you will take the argument self usually so this is inherited from a unit test dot test case classic if you go to the documentation of this you can actually see the uh, methods okay uh, these are the two methods setup and teardowns are as you can see the description hookup method for setting up text picture before exercising it okay so here I can say print I'm going to print it as this this is case level setup okay now similarly I'll have dev setup I'm um, sorry teardown uh, this okay I'm just going to print out this is case level teardown down now when I run the test case basically setups will uh, setup will run first then the test case will run then the teardown will run and these two methods will run uh, this method will run before every test case and this method will run after every test case uh, unless uh, some uh, interruption has occurred and um, there is a, a failure um, fatal failure or system failure so uh, if I run this test now you can see yeah 
first is the case level setup then the test case then the teardown as expected now if you have something uh, on a class level on a suit level if you want to uh, do setup on a uh, uh, suit level then you have to do setup class and let me just print one line here this uh, is suit level setup def uh, teardown class print this is suit level teardown okay but uh, the you these two methods need to be class class method need to have this decorator okay you should mark this mark them as class methods or as uh, the setups and trade-downs won't work okay then set down with if, if I run the file now as you can see there should be yeah this is the suit level setup this will run before uh, running all the tests and you have case level setups and teardowns um, and then a uh, at the end you have uh, teardowns uh, the suit level teardown so basically why we would use this especially in the API testing you have in the setups you have probably um, like uh, opening a session opening a file etc in the teardowns you may have closing the file closing the session and do some cleanup action and stuff like that uh, this is cleanup uh, is sometimes cleanup is most important to um, just to make sure that next time we have the testability ready so uh, that's about it uh, and there's one more thing uh, if you want to generate HTML report then what you can do is I so you can just to install this library pytest-html okay if you do pip install pytest-html then okay, let's see okay and just type it out install pytest test hyphen html this should install the library i think i already installed it i keep okay install okay okay i have already installed it if you once you do that if you want to generate the report all you have to do is by test and pass this argument as extra hyphen hyphen html equal to the name of the html report file so if i just do that let me say by test or else i can run the previous command and just add this part html equal to or uh, say report dot html this should generate the file okay it says generate html file here if i just open that okay this is the report it actually shows how many test cases passed failed and errors all those things okay this is the this is the basic stuff about pytest in the next tutorial um, i'm planning to cover some more things like parameterization um, ordering of the test cases and those things so um, thank you for watching